So, hi guys! Welcome to our weekly Skill Brewing. Well, it's usually on Thursday. We actually have one on Thursday. So, uh, if you want updates regarding uh, this kind of webinars where you can learn many things, you can go to our Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com.co. Um, and on Instagram also, you can go to our LinkedIn account if you have LinkedIn. And you can also check our website. We post uh, our events there at the same time. Okay, thanks, Queen. Um, okay, I think we can start na. Um, habo na lang iba. Okay. Um, so today, I will be discussing Git Essentials. Um, I'm your instructor for today, Gab Benedicto. And um, okay, let's proceed. Uh, on speaker introduction, here's our agenda for the day. Speaker introduction, expectation setting, and your role as the audience. So I would like to keep the session as much as possible in English, but I'll talk in Tagalog and Filipino from time to time um, just to get my message across like to other audiences, okay? Uh, part of our agenda as well is uh, we'll be having a bit, of, a little bit of prequel to the Git essential. So I will not just teach Git. I will also teach why you need Git and why was it invented, why do we need it, and so on. Um, we're gonna go over some anatomy and basics, branching and workflows. Okay. Um, okay. So here's me. I'm your speaker for today. I. Uh, I have 11 years diverse experience in tech. I started as a Java middleware developer um, in my first two years of a career. And after that, I've um, transitioned more on to the DevOps and automation lead for eight years. Um, and I also have several startup, part of several startups in the Philippines, uh, mainly that focuses on the industries that Illustratus also covers. So that's in the healthcare industry, um, in the job, seeker industry advertising industry so i've been part of lots of those startups and also did consulting from time to time um in the us in australia and hong kong and yeah and i'm the illustrator's founder and tech director so that's about me okay so expectations i would just like to um have the expectations of everybody this presentation will focus on uh, the kit basics and concepts only so this session is intended for the audiences who have zero knowledge in Git and advanced Git knowledge or whatever Git advanced um, usage, commands, and tools will not be covered by this presentation. Okay. Um, as you may know, or some of you may or may not know, I like my sessions to be more interactive. I like to talk with my audience. I like to know what they're thinking about. So right now, um, just a quick quick one in the chat box here in on uh, Google Meet, can you please type your name or your nickname? Uh, what are your skill set? What, what, do, what do you like to do? And what is your technology dream? Like someday you want to build a real life Iron Man, something like that. And then uh, the third part is I want you to type in what your expectations in the presentation and if any, any get quest get questions that you have. So I may answer them later on on the call. So please type it, it now. I can probably see it on my secondary monitor. So also another reminder is if you're lazy, um, <laughs> if you don't like to read the slides, um, I advise you to read the words in bold font later on. So I, I created this deck so that you can actually focus your eyes on the bold font letters and you can still understand what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, I'm not seeing anyone typing in the messages. Please type them in. Just your name, your nickname, skill set, technology dream, any Git related questions and expectations on the presentation. Okay, while waiting, I'm going to go over the Git overview. So what I will be talking about today 
So get usage for dummies. So that's another word for beginners. Other stuff, not just Git in itself. So I'll be talking a lot of things related to Git. And in general, I like to do that. And as I like to point out, the slides that I am presenting is for reference only. You can read some words on the presentation. You can read it all, but I'll be discussing them. Okay, uh, I'd like to what I like to people to take away from this session is why you need Git in your life in tech. Um, it's not for professionals, even though you're just in college, you need Git right now. Um, basic understanding how to use Git as a person, so not a, not a computer. Um, remember, at least one command that helps you in the future. And that way, I, I know that something came across during our presentation. I won't be talking about advanced Git commands like Git rebase, um, cherry picking, Git reset. Um, I'm not be talking about what Git tool that I'm using, source 3, tortoise, SVN. Um, I will not also be discussing why Git is better than SVN, even though it is. <laughs> so, okay. I think that's it. So now we'll start. Okay, a brief prequel. So, once upon a time, um, people have had issues introducing introducing changes on files that are shared with other people. So as you can see, when you're working with a single file, like you have this, let's just say a simple Word document, and you're working with this Word document, and you share this Word document somewhere in your hard drive, right? So before, when you share this Word document to an, another person, they can edit it, they can do whatever stuff they want to it. And then when it came back to you, when it comes back to you, you will notice a lot of a lot of stuff have been changed, but you don't know what was the value of that sentence before. Right? There's there's no real history. Who changed what? Who changed who? Okay. And who can access this document? Uh where can we properly store this? What what auditing can we do? What is the integrity of the document? Okay. And how about you don't like what's, what was changed in the document? How can you get the original copy of the document? So this is a simple problem that, that is being encountered by programmers. So as you can see, programmers deals with lots of codes, lots of files at the same time, right? So we, on a simple program, you can have hundreds of text files, hundreds of hundreds of config files, hundred Word docs, hundreds of codes, etc. And we need, somehow, we need to organize it in such a way that you know where each of that file is, who are making the changes, what changes have been made, when did they make the change, okay? And is that change valid, okay? That's one of the basic, you know, problems that we have before. Then, then came a SEM. So people have it enough. Um, smart people, I don't know who, who they are, but I've had a brief um, history lesson about SEM before. And before I think it was called Delta, Delta Revision System, something like that, Revision Control System. And it deals with deltas. If you're gonna search What's the meaning of delta right now? It's the change from one snapshot to another. So they call it the, the delta revision control system. So, the, so smart people decided that, okay, we need a system for this one. We need SEM. We need a software configuration management. And SEM deals with two things, standard processes and tools. Okay? So just this two. We need a set of standard processes we can implement on our codes, on our text files, whatever file is that, so that any everyone can follow that. And we'd also need a standard set of tools. So that's the two areas of concern of SEM, okay? So these smart people, they said, okay, we need a discipline. And we need a discipline, we need a process. So what do we need to focus to focus 
on SEM. So they said it's identification, control, status, then audits. Okay, guys, okay, so let me know if I'm being too, too fast. Huh? So I just browsing through the slides um, because there's so many. <laughs> okay, so as I said here, um, the SEM people said, the creators of SEM said, we need discipline on these four areas. The first area is identification. Okay, the first step is to identify and define what needs to be tracked and its properties. Okay, on the example that I have earlier, um, the Word document. So first, we need to track that document. So in SEM, it deals with tracking with artifacts, documents, files. So that's what need to be tracked. So what about it? What properties needs to be tracked? So the SEM people said, okay, we need to track when was it created, who is doing the changes, what what changes have been made. Um, is it is the integrity okay where where was it created something like that so all those properties will need to be tracked and any other key information about it okay and then in sem it said create a baseline of all this stuff like what is the status of this document what are the me measurements okay so this document was created october 19 2021 um, the initial contents are this. It was created by this author on this place and this address and so on and so forth. So that's the first step of SEM is to identify the property file. How will we, how will we convert this to software development? So if someone created a properties file or an HTML file, a CSS file, we, we should know how it looks like, what are its contents, where is it saved, um, what is the size, you know, the file size. You can have the same the, the same CSS file, but different um, file size. That can happen. Uh, what else? Um, so those are the properties. So those are the files that need to be tracked. Okay. Second one, as said by the SEM peeps, is control. So, oh, so yeah, here you can have a file, you can have documents, you can actually do... You can actually track a project structure, okay? It's not necessary a file or a document or an image. You can actually um, track a project structure. You can actually create an HTML folder, CSS folder, JS folder, and under that, you can create test, prod, or development, something like that. So it's not just files. It's just limited to files. Okay, the second one they said is control. So we need to create somehow a control on who can make these changes, okay? It's not that we have a Word document in Google Drive. Anyone can do make changes to it, okay? You can also make sure that this file can only be changed by five persons like the supervisors. And by this process, they invented what they call the check-in, check-out process. So I'm not sure if anyone have um, encountered this before, but the check-in, check-out process is one of the main processes of a version control system. Git, in particular, have this, but it, it's slightly different with um, slightly different with subversion. How subversion deals with check-in and check-out, but definitely check-in, check-out process is something SEM have created. Um, check in, check out involves approval and who introduced these changes and the things that we have identified early on. So we have identified that we need to track its properties. But if someone wants to change a file name, can somebody do that? Someone needs to edit it or entirely delete it. So we need to have some sort of control on who can do these things, who can edit, who can view, who can delete. Okay. So the control, the check-in, check-out process is this. Before you can actually make changes to a file, again, this is not entirely applicable to software development. If you want changes made to a file, you do a check-out. Okay? You do a check-out. Meaning, I'm checking this file out no one can do changes to it. 
Okay? Check this file out. No one can do changes to it. So if someone wants to view this, no problem. But they cannot make changes. Why? Because it is checked out on my end. Okay? When I'm done, I will check them in. So that's the concept of check out and check in. You're checking out the file, limiting the changes to yourself, and then you're checking in your changes so that anyone who have access to this centralized document will see your changes. So that's one of the ways on how people, um, how people have control on what changes are being introduced to files, documents, or project structure. Okay, I hope that's clear. Um, this is not entirely, we're not discussing Git yet. We're discussing SEM for now. Okay. Um, please, if you have any questions, if I'm too fast, too fast, please just type them in. Uh, so, okay. I'm just seeing the introduction messages. That's okay. Okay. The third step in SEM is called status. So in SEM, you also need to track the status test. Okay. So you will have the accounting of what was happening, recording of what was happening, reporting of what had happened. So at any point in time, I should be able to tell why was it changed, when was it changed, who changed it, and anything related, any attributes that we, we are tracking, I should be able to tell. The information should be readily available. So SEM, SEM will focus on that as well. Okay. So remember earlier, um, you know, <laughs> okay. So someone, um, so someone checked out the changes and then checked them in a good SEM tool will ask you for a description of what you just did. So this is the first description, and the, the, a good SEM tool will record who made the changes and when did the major changes, okay? And then so that th another user, like here, there too, a good SEM tool knows, okay, so we changed the title again. So derp1 will not be surprised, oh, why did derp2 change my title? And when did it change? Oh, May 4, okay. Um, he said he changed the title to be the most clear. So this way, this document is being tracked that everyone knows what's happening, who changed it, and when. So that's the third focus area of SEM. So lastly, um, auditing. So in auditing, um, you want to know that a, a version of that file is the final version of something that we want to do okay we want to check its properties we want to check its attributes the changes everything all of these are good and you said the goal of this file like the config file is everything should be here all the hard-coded values of the application is saved on the config file so we can actually do the auditing a good sam tool can actually do audits on a file if it's corrupted is it okay is it version two? Is it version three? Is it is it a release version? Okay, so that's auditing. So yeah, uh, just SM tool can say that okay, this file is good to go as of October 19, 2021. We can actually deploy this in production. Okay, this is not corrupted. It is somehow um, the most recent version. Okay, this is good to go. Okay. So I go back. So that's the four main focus areas of SEM. You need to identify, control, status, and audit. Okay? So grab, where does Git fit in? So Git, what do you think Git fit, fits in, in here? SEM. Git is what? Anyone? Yes, ERA. 
Thank you. So, Git is an SEM tool. Okay? So, it's part of the SEM. It implements the SEM process and it's part of SEM because it's an SEM tool. Okay? Thank you, Aira. So, Git is actually a version control tool which is overall created because of SEM, Software Configuration Management. Okay? So, what is Git? So, Git is the most popular version control system right now. The second most popular version control right now, version control system is Subversion. Um, I know lots of companies who are using Subversion right now, but everyone is um, using Git because of its advantages. And actually, if you, um, if you analyze the structure or the how Git operates, it's very similar on how blockchain works. I think the concept of blockchain, I'm not sure, don't quote me on this, don't quote, quote me on this but I think blockchain is created with the same concept as Git. So I'm going to, I mean, Git is created with the same concept as a blockchain. I'm going to explain it later. Okay. So Git is the most popular version control tool. Um, so it just means if, if it's so popular and you have trouble using Git, just go into the internet, uh, Stack Overflow, and probably someone else have already experienced what you just experienced. So they can help you out. Um, also, if you just notice, lately, uh, I think that was yesterday or the other day, GitLab has just gone public. They have listed in NASDAQ, I think, to challenge GitHub as the as a Git hosting provider service. So we're living in the good times. Okay, Git is intuitive and helpful. So in Git, if you have an, an issue with a Git command, so I'm a fan of using command line clients. So if you have an issue with Git command line clients, it's gonna suggest, um, Okay, here's what you are doing, but can you try this? So Git is very intuitive and helpful, okay? So if you're currently on a particular stage in Git, like a particular um, process, and that you don't know what to do, Git can suggest several, um, several commands that you can issue or you can do so that you will, you will not get stuck. And finally, Git is really better than SVN. So later, I'm going <laughs> to come and explain why. Okay. Um, how does it work in concept? So Git has three states. Remember this, three states. Modified, committed, staged. Okay. We're going to discuss each, of, each one of it. When you change the file, obviously, that file is modified. So the state of this file is modified. Okay, you're gonna see it later. Git will label it as M. It means you, the person, has changed this file. Modified, but nothing is saved yet. Nothing, nothing, nothing is set in stone, okay? It's just modified. So that's the first stage, modified. Next. Okay, so the next stage is called staged. So for that modified file that you just did, I'm gonna put that to a staging area. It means it's ready to be committed, okay? So I think this, this concept is pretty much where the confusion starts. So Gav, um, What's the difference between modified file and stage file? Again, it's just you're putting those files that you change here. You modify the file here. You put them in the staging area. It, it is just for you saying to Git that, okay, whatever I put in the staging area, that can be committed later on. That's just it. There's no difference. You can, act, you can still actually see this later on which is M modified, which is S staged, okay? 
no difference at all. Git will not do anything to it. It will not save it. It will not um it will not um push it somewhere else. It is only staged. Okay? Also, one of the advantage that you can do with a staged file is you can all you can also revert back your changes on a staged file. So that's one of the advantage. Uh okay, I think I've I have um changed my mind. I don't need this. So you can actually revert your changes. Okay. Okay, lastly, committed. So Git, one of the concepts of Git is you have a local database. Yes, you can use Git even though you're not connected to the internet. You can actually see a history in your local machine. If you have Git, you can actually see the history of what you're doing locally. Okay? So the data is safely stored in your local database. So from the file that is modified, you put it in staging, staging area, and then you committed those changes to a local database. Okay. So what now? Um, why do I need it? Because again, as I said, if you did this, if you change your file this way, you can remember what what change did you introduce last Tuesday, last Wednesday, uh, today, and then you remember, okay, the, the codes from last Sunday is working. You can actually go back to that version of the file because Git is actually saving a snapshot of your file for every commit that you are doing. Okay, okay, this is version one, this is version two, this is version three. So at any point in time, you can actually revert to that version of the file. Okay, I hope it's clear. This is the main concept of Git. Clear, and, and everyone? Can I get, get uh, okay or time swap from everyone? Yep, yep, okay, yes. Okay, so this this is the Git concept in picture. So in this is the SEM book. If you want to visit this, this has been my Git SEM related book for how many years or ten years, I think. Okay, so you have your working directory. Um, when you see terms like this, don't go, don't get confused. Working directory just means a directory in your workspace, in your server. Yes, you, you can actually install Git in your server in anywhere where the files are. That's it. <laughs> Nothing special. So if you create a folder locally and you have files in there, that's your working directory. That's it. First, you want to check out the project. So if you have a Git repository in a local, you check them out. As I mentioned, right? Check out those files. And then you, you change something, you stage your fixes or your your changes. Let's put in the staging area. And then finally, from the staging area, commit those changes to a git direct to, to the git repository. If you'll notice in your working directory. If you en enabled all the files to be shown, you will see this folder, .git. All the magic happens here, .git directory. It, it should be um, hooks, whatever, um, anything else. You can, you can find lots of stuff here inside the git directory. It, it, it will look like alien to you, but if you know what you're doing, um, it's a good one to to, 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 to to study. Okay? Okay, next. The anatomy of Git. Okay, it's a big word, but anatomy just simply means the details and of the structure, the internal stuff of something. So what is Git in itself? So a Git repository, they said, is a directed acyclic graph of commits can anyone so this again this is a big word but i want to dissect it to you guys because that's what we do we want to learn 
if you say directed, what does it mean? Anyone? Directed. No need for middlemen. Uh, no, not particularly. You still need the Git tool to communicate with Git. Focused on. Specially aimed. Okay. English language lang to, ah. E, um, I'm just gonna pointed. Kinda, kinda. Yeah, that's near, era. So, the root word of directed is direct. So, if you want to direct something, you want to um, point it to somewhere. Right? Yeah, to steer. So, if, if a graph is directed, a graph is there's a certain route, yeah? That's correct, June. A graph that is directed is actually, a graph has a direction. It's pointing to something. Okay? So, this is very simple, very simple English language. Okay, next, a cyclic graph. What do you mean by a cyclic? This is basic English language. Okay, no answer. I'm gonna break it down. Remove the A. What do you mean by cyclic? Ulit, ulit. Yes. Okay. Recurring. Yes. So in the root word of cyclic, okay, the meaning of cyclic actually is having the properties of being in a cycle. That's IC. So the root word of this word is cycle. So what do you mean by cycle? As you guys mentioned, cycle is... Cycle is, sabi nyo, paulit-ulit, recurring, right? There's a cycle. Yes, repetitions, there's a cycle. In the English language, yan, meron pa kayong free English language course. If you put an A in front of a word, what does it do? It negates it. Yes, thank you. It negates it. So, what do you mean by a cyclic in this case? Non-repetitive. Okay, it's non-cycling. Hindi siya nagsa-cycle. So, in other words, thank you. Okay, in other words, a Git repository is a directed a cyclic graph. It's it's a non-cycling repository with a direction of commit. So, I'm going to show it to you later. Okay. There's two parts of Git. One is the, the Git folder that I just mentioned. Every all the magic happens here. And secondly, you have the working directory. Okay. So this is a directed acyclic graph. Again, don't culture shock. This is just a, a sample. Of what's happened what's happening so going to explain it one by one the next slide okay so let's just say earlier you have the version one of the file here so focus your eyes here so we have version one of the file and then uh, you change something and then you committed it so jm created version two so this is the version two okay i made changes to this one so that's version three. But I cannot make changes to this and say that's version one. Because again, we're a cyclic. And if you're a cyclic, there's a direction. So direction is always moving forward. Okay? So V1 in this case have been merged to V3. So V1 and V2. V1 
is merged here. Again, someone made changes to 5 to version 3. That's version 4. And then it was merged to V8. So I'm going to make sure V5, V6, V7. So if you want to read this properly, if you check out this file, V4, can you see the changes from V5, V6, V7? Yes or no? Simple question. Not yet. Yes. Because someone did some changes on version 3 and called it version 5. And someone did changes on version 5 and called it version 6, version 7, and version 8. So someone who is reading this file cannot see these changes. Okay? They cannot see it. Not until he merged his documents back or the his or her changes to V8. So if I'm V8, can I see um, the changes in V10? Yes or no? Yes. Because V10 is eventually merged to V7, and V7 is merged to V8. Okay? So there's nothing, there's nothing fancy about this graph. You can actually read this. So this is version 1 of the file. This is the version 2, 3, 11. And then again, um, don't be fooled by the numbers um it's not incremental you can say that why v10 is here v8 is here um, 14 is here something like that so it's just the way we like to number things so i can put a b c some in here is the graph will stay the same okay so v3 someone made changes to v3 and named it version 11. someone made changes to version 11 and named it v12 and then eventually he merged everything to V8. All of this have been merged to version 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So version 8 contains 11 commits. This file, from the very beginning, have been changed 11 times. Version 4, the file has been changed 4 times. Version 11, the file has been changed four times as well. One, two, three, four. And the change here and the change here is different. So I may be seeing four changes to a file. I checked out version four, but it's not the same file as me checking out this same version 11. The same goes here. Okay, is that clear, everyone? Or nalilito pa sa graph? Is the graph clear? Any questions about the uh, cyclic graph? Clear. Okay. Thanks. Oh, yes, I think my question. Sure, sure, go ahead. Okay, I guess this is one of the strengths of having a version control. Uh, let's just say you're working on an article. Okay, you're working on an article, and that article have three paragraphs. And then I told you to, so we're working on V3. Okay, say three paragraphs. I ask you to change paragraph one. I ask um buena to change paragraph two and i ask nicole to change paragraph three and each of you has a copy of that document how how would i know which is the correct document to check so all of you have three copies right so B4, B5, and V11. So B4, 
the only thing that's changed, you have the whole article, and the only thing to change is paragraph one. B5 is a whole article, but that the only one that's changed is the second paragraph. And V11, everything is the same. The only thing to change is the paragraph three. So we now have three versions of the file, right? This one. So, however, for for the person assigned to paragraph two, so let's say V5, I have a revision. Um, please change this. Okay, he changed it. Uh, okay, please change it. Okay. The, just, let's just imagine wala itong dalawang to. Again, so nagkarat tatlong revision ako kay paragraph two. Still, version seven only contains changes to the second paragraph, right? The first and third paragraph is still the old one from here. Okay? So I approve this version. Okay, you're good to go. So the third paragraph, I only have one review. Ah, okay, can you please change this? Okay, created the version 12. Mm, okay, that's okay, that's good. And then for the first paragraph, the first revision was already good. And then finally, if I merge them together, version 8 contains all these changes. Paragraph 1 is changed, paragraph 2 is changed, paragraph 3 is changed. You get the idea? So, yes. Yes, because that's the idea of SEM, right? Um, you want to you want to be able to control the changes made to a file by multiple persons at the same time. And that happens a lot in programming. Okay. Yeah, I hope that's clear. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. It's a very good question, Jayama. Thank you. Anyone else? This is an interactive session. I, If you have questions, just ask me. Nothing. Okay. Next. Okay. The Git folder. So the Git folder is where the actual contents of the repository is. That's your local database. Um, this is where the bare repository is. It contains all the good stuff, like the branches, the tags, hooks, references, pack files. So sounds technical, but then again, if you study it, it's not that technical. Don't change anything in here unless you're daring enough. Um, this is where you add client-side hooks, updating the git, git config file. OK, another question for you guys. Hooks is a software common software term what do you think a hook is in general what is the purpose of a hook don't don't um don't be culture shock to, for catching something exactly so if you need to catch something like a fish you have a hook and in a hook para you have a higher chances of winning you put a bait right so in in your household if you want to someone to catch something to catch the weight of a of a curtain rod, you need a hook. Okay? So, in programming, what do you think we should catch? In Git. What do you think we, we can catch by using a hook? This is a common software term. By the way, you will hear this a lot, especially in DevOps. So what is a hook? Any guesses? What do you need to catch and get? Guess, guess.
Okay, none? Okay. So, hooks, actually, you need, you can use a git hook to catch the changes. So, what's the use of that, Gab? Para saan siya? So, let's just say na I finally merged everything to this one, version 8. I can create a hook so that whenever three or more files have been merged, I will send an email. Okay? So whenever a change is introduced, let's say to a, uh, this is a bit technical, to a main branch, trigger a build in the cloud. Send an email, send a Slack chat, send a Google Meet chat. So that's a hook. That's the purpose of the hook. If so, it, it needs something to be triggered by, and then it's gonna it's gonna do whatever you like it to do. In this case, whenever a change is made, send an email, something like that. If the main branch is changed, update the application in the cloud. Make sense? Now gets my concept ni hook. Yep, yep. Okay. So in the programming world, there are two types of hook. The pre and the post. Slow down production. No, actually, no, no, no. It, it won't. Uh, it 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 will only matter if how you implement the hook. Okay. So in in common terms as well. So medyo side track na to. There are two kinds of hook: pre hook and post hook. What do you think? is the difference between pre-hook and post-hook. Again, this is normally English language. <laughs> Nothing fancy. Difference between pre-hook, before and after. Yes, thanks, Queen. So before you trigger the hook, what do you want to do? After you trigger the hook, what do you want to do? Okay. So in this case, before you actually allow the change to happen, what do you want to do? Okay, I want I want um, a validation to occur first. I want to make sure that the file is not corrupted. I want to make sure that the commit description has a value. The description is not equal to zero. So that's a pre-hook. Before you allow it, before you allow the changes, validate it and show an error to the user. Okay, now you have allowed it. What do you want to do? Okay, send an email, trigger a build, um, trigger a chat, okay, sound the alarm, buy, buy coffee, something like that. So that's a basic principle of hook. Pre-hooks and post-hooks, okay? Another side lesson for you. Okay. So unlike other people, so I'm not sure who's afraid of the word commit, but certainly not me. Um, it's something you'll, you'll hear so often. So to explain, in Git, a commit is a reference to a snapshot of the state of a file. Again, it is a reference. In, this is in Git, huh? This is a reference to a snapshot of the state of a file. I am giving... I, I want to give you an example. In the creatives world, and I hope walang taga-creatives dito. May taga-creatives ba dito, Jambay? Okay, hama na. Trust you, pa rin natin sila. <laughs> if, you're gonna see, if you're gonna see the folder, yung mga banners or pictures nila, how does it look like? It looks like this. Um, banner 1, revision 1. Banner, banner 1, Final, final one. Banner two, final, final, final three. And sa tingin ko na trigger na si Buena. Um, banner three, final, final na talaga from client. So something like that. Okay? But in Git, if you have that version of a... You actually reference. Para, yes, parang sa thesis. In Git, you don't actually have to do multiple copies of a file. You just need one copy of the file and Git will take care of everything for you. Okay, and then the commit, if you do a git commit, they will reference it as a snapshot of that particular file. Okay, 
So going back to this slide, if you do a git commit, we're saying we're creating another version, right? So this is that pointer here. So version eight is a is actually a pointer to this version. So if you want to see what does a file looks like in version eight, check this out. Git check out version eight. Ah, what does a file look like in version ten? Git check out version ten. Actually, that's a command. That's that's easy. <laughs> Git space check out space version ten. Oh, how does the file looks like in version one? The initial Git check out version one. These are just references at any point in time of what the files actually look like. Okay. Okay, in Git, it's it's not named as version one, version two. Again, it's not. They are not incremental. They are not sequential. So a commit is created by its SHA one hash. Okay, I think this is more on technical for technical people. What do you mean by hash? Hash. Tech team, come on. What is hash? Oh my god. Dito nuro sa inyo yung hash. Hash brown. Pwede. Meron ko dito hash. Ano? Ano ba tong hash ko? Ewan ko. From falafel to eh. Anyone? What, what is hash? Yes, numbers. So what is it? Key. Somehow. Okay, sige, Google nyo lang yung hash. So hash is actually one of... Um, yes, actually it's a key. But and, and SHA-1 is a kind of hashing algorithm wherein you can encrypt data. Okay. To make sure that all your commits is unique, Git will create a SHA-1 hash key for that commit. So that you can actually refer to its SHA-1 hash key. Okay? So instead of Git checkout version 6, you're going to say Git, Git checkout CYVB135B, something like that. So that's a SHA-1 key, SHA-1 hash key. Okay? There are different types of hashes. I forgot the other one, but the most popular one is SHA-1. SHA-1. Okay? A commit also contains the metadata of that commit. So as I said, if you make changes to a particular file, we should know who done it, who is, yeah, the committer and the author the same. Mm, yeah. Timestamps, when was it changed, and the message. So a, a git commit will contain something like um, I change the header of paragraph one according to Gab's feedback. So automatically, git will add the author, the committer, um, the timestamps, and the message that you just did. Okay, this is outside of the document itself. Actually, if you're going to go to the Google Docs, Google Docs right now in your Google Drive and check the history, you can actually see the commit made that data. In that sense, Google Doc is actually version controlled. You can actually go back in a point in time and see revision one, revision two, revision five. Okay. And com commits in Git normally have a single parent commit, meaning V8 um, have a parent commit of this, 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 V3, this. V1, na. Normally, it only have one. Okay? So later, we're gonna pass this. Okay. So remember the example before uh, when JM asked on how does it look like? So let's just say in your folder, so this is not a file. Or if you want to treat it, this is paragraph A, paragraph B, paragraph C. But in this case, my my the image source from Git itself, you have file one, file 
file A, file B, file C on this particular folder. So imagine this is a folder in your laptop. File A, file B, file C. I made changes to A1, to file A and file C. And then I committed that those changes. So version 2 would look like this. A1, B, C1. It just means that since version 1, someone changed file A and file C. Okay, but file B remains the same. Is that clear? Clear ba? Clear, clear, clear? Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so, okay, someone checked it out again. Okay, let's check it out. Ah, okay, um, file B looks okay. Oh, I need to change something A1. So, I don't know, um, A1 seems to be okay, but I need to change something in C2. So, the version 3 of your folder looks like A1, B, C2. So, as you can see, Git is actually taking a snapshot of that particular folder at any particular point in time. Okay, what does it look like in version 2 ba? Just check this out. You can see. Uh, what does it look like in version 1? You can see. Okay. And then version 4, oh, um, I need to change something in B. In file B, I need to change something in A then. So in version 4, as you can see, A, A has been changed twice, B has been changed once, C has been changed twice. So that's what it looked like. Then finally, in the version 5, I need to change something in B again, and it's the same time in C. As you can see, the version 5 of the folder contains two changes to A, two changes to B, three changes to, three, to C. At, and then Git allows you that at any particular point in time, view how does that folder look like over time. Okay? Clear, everyone? Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? Uh huh. Walang reactions. Okay. How do you feel so far? Um. How how does everyone feel so far? Like it gets some concept to get. It's fine. Yes. Okay, it's just like doing a save on your local machine from time to time, but, you know, it's version controlled. Okay. Parang Google Drive, yeah, exactly. But this one is more focused on software development. Okay, so, if it does have, naglo-loading lang, okay, sige, kaya mo yan, part of growing up yan. Uh, okay, so... Here are 10 basic git commands. And I hope isa dito you can do on your own. Actually, itong git init na to, you can actually do this anytime. And it's actually good if you guys have if you guys have git on your local machine and then try this. It's better. So you can actually learn with us. So the first command is init status add commit branch config remote push clone and pull. So these are your 10 git basic commands okay first um but the last, you will also encounter this term from time to time on almost all the command line interface tools you're gonna in, that you're gonna encounter in your it career so i got two questions when you say command line interface What is a command line interface? CLI for short. Come on, tech tips. CLI, command line.
command line, command line. Terminal. Yes. So some people call it terminal. Um, a git command line interface. Um, okay, another word for you. What? So I can explain it. What do you mean by interface? This is an English word. Yes, interact. You use it to interact. Anyone else? Face to face. Inter yeah, from the from the root word itself, it's face. When you you when you say inter, what does inter mean? It's a prefix in the English language. Inter versus intra. Okay, balik English language muna tayo. Mukhang nakalimutan, <laughs> nakalimutan niyo yung ibig sabihin ng inter. Okay, between. Pa yung intra? Within. Okay. Nag-English naman pala kayo eh. So, what's the difference between internet and intranet? I-type nyo lang. Internet is, from the root of it itself, what's the difference between internet and intranet? Between net. So net, okay, JM, thank you. So net, ang internet is a connection between two networks. Yun lang yun, internet. It's a connection between two networks. And we are connected via a network of a network of a network via the world, world wide web that's the protocol okay that's, that's why it's called internet between networks okay and we are connected to it via the world wide web okay intranet when you say intranet what does it mean restricted area why does it why do we call it intra because it's within the network. Okay? Sa inyo na rin ang galing yan. You said it's within. So, internet is within the network. You can actually access your sharing between the network. Uh, sorry, within the network. You cannot access it outside because the communication is inside the network. Nagets na difference? Internet versus intranet? So, Mapua, the institutions, College levels, companies, they all have what we call intranet. May sariling in intranet sa mga companies yan. And you cannot access it outside because it's not connected to the internet because obviously, it's an intranet. Okay. Next. <laughs> what do you mean by interface? So, inter, we all agreed that it is, what's the meaning of inter? It's between. Okay. So, interface is, masyado kasi kayo nag-iisip ng technical eh. Internet is between two faces. <laughs> yes. Uh, exactly. Okay, question. How do people interact with an electric fan? How can you tell the electric fan to go faster. Anong interface gamit niya? The buttons. Yes. That's the, that's the interface. Yes. The, the numbers. How do you interact with your TV to change channels? That's the interface. And there's different kinds of interface. The most common, and the, I think one of the most successful interface out there is called the GUI. What do you mean by GUI? Yes, the graphical user interface. It's one of the most successful interface because we are communicating with our computers via graphics. Okay? That's our interface with the computer chip. We're telling the, our computers, okay, 
open the browser by what? By clicking the icon. So we're actually seeing graphics. Okay? There's a user interface. The graphical user interface. Okay? Okay, going back. Uh, it is, may konting background kayo. Um, what is a command line interface? You said this, how you interact with what? Yes. So you're actually, a command line interface is actually somewhere when you do commands and interact with something. So Git has, has a command line interface. Jira has a command line interface. AWS has a command line interface. Azure, everything. So you can talk to Git via a command line interface. Um, Git has also has a graphical user interface right click click right click but behind the scenes that GUI is actually executing executing git commands okay so in your vs code if you do a right click commit behind the scenes vs code or your eclipse will actually execute git commit this one okay that's why if you need Git in your VS Code, in your Eclipse, or your favorite IDE um, editor, you're actually required to install Git. Because it's just an interface. It's just a graphical user interface. So I'm a fan of using the CLI because I'm much more in control. I know what's going on. And then Git created a command line interface for us so that we can communicate to Git. Okay? Yan. So, ang dami na na. English language pa kayo. Sino yung English prof niya sabihin niya sa akin? Anyway. Okay. If you do a git... Okay, last. You can also see this in a design pattern. Um, what do you mean by init? This is very common. Initialize. Yes. So, Amazon... In it, git in it, Jira in it. You can see actually you can also create a function called in it. So in git though, they they will if you have a workstation right now, it's, it's, I recommend that doing this. Create a folder. So I choose this folder, I install this workspace git demo. This is just an empty folder. I install git in Windows and you ex execute this git in it. What will it do is it will initialize an empty Git repository in this path. That's it. Everything that you need to do will be created in here. It will create this directory as I mentioned earlier. Git init. That's it. Already, git dash demo, this folder in your laptop, is already a working directory. Okay, git in it. That's it. Your you can start using git manually. You can actually copy paste this folder, that git folder. But the git people decided to make it more simple and create a a command called in it, and it will do everything for you. Okay, that's that's your first command. Second, so. Again, don't if you see something like this, working ma culture shock, just analyze analyze it one by one. Okay. So git status, so just we know what's up with your workspace directory. If you created a file, if you modified it, if you deleted it, and a bunch of other things that you need to know about. So in this directory, if I type, so remember we're still on this directory, git demo. Here, git demo. Okay. If you type git status, it will tell you what branch are you are you on. I'm going to explain this later on. Okay, and then this file has been deleted. This file has been modified. And this file has not been added to the staging area. So as you can see, git already have suggestions for you. Okay, in the staging area. So he said you modified this and then added to staging. So if you want this to be committed, git 
add this file. Okay? And then, if you want something to be restored, kasi dinilit mo na nga siya, you do a git restore file. So that, all your changes to this file will be discarded. So, git is actually doing this for you already. Okay? Oh, na-delete ko to. You can actually restore it. So, it's very safe for you to delete a file in Git kasi you can restore it from, from whatever version of the file you like as long as it is committed in the Git repository. Okay? On below here, um, there's a file that had not been added yet. Meaning, ito, kakakreate lang ng file na to. We're not tracking changes to this file yet. So, if dinilit ko tong my second git file that text, there's no way for you to recover that because git is not tracking this file yet. Again, git will suggest a command, git add etong file na to. Very straightforward. Also, don't forget this git is actually a binary. I think for next lesson na yun ko ah. Basta naka-alias lang yan. Uh, next lesson na lang. <laughs> Um, if you install, the, the short version is that, is, is that when you install Git in your Windows, a part of that Windows installer will actually update your system variables. It will add a path to the Git installation folder where the actual binary is. And then when you type Git, it will execute that Git executable. Yun lang yun. Next time na yun. Okay. So, for you to add this file to the Git, tracking software, you do git add this file. Okay? So clear na ba si git status? Everyone clear so far? Git init and git status? Clear so far? Clear so far. Okay, git add. As I mentioned before, since wala pa to sa tracking, so you just do a git add. Git add. So very straightforward. Git add my first git file.txt. Okay? So, ito lang yon. If you git, do the git add, it's just in the staging area. Pwede, ready na siya sa commitment. So, ready na siya sa mga mature na roles. Okay? Sige. Finally, so if you have the git status, you have the git add, you will now, it's now ready for commitment. So, you do the git commit. So, as I explained earlier, if you do a git commit, it will create a snapshot of that file. Okay? Whatever is this in the staging area, this one, deleted, modified, if you commit it, see, my first commit. So, this is the commit message. So, I have one file change, zero files change, I one file change, um, insertion, wala naman, wala naman akong na file. So, meron akong kinareate na file, which is my first git file.txt. Yun na siya. That's how you read it. It's a root commit, eting hash. Remember earlier, this is the hash. So, if you want to check out this commit git, check out E9B179C. And ano doon ginamit ko? Ah, okay. This is the first commit. Ah, okay. Meron na siyang isang file na change. Ano yung change niya? Ah, nag-create siya ng isang file. Ito yun. Ito yung size niyan. Okay? Is it clear? Clear naman? Uh, wala pang complicated dito. Simple commands. Okay. Ito na. Ah, mahirap. Hindi naman mahirap. Git branch. I will explain this in detail later, ha? Um, git branch will create a virtual pointer to any commit. Kasi ang hirap daw tandaan nito. Itong sha one hash na to, kung natandaan nyo to kanina, sige, may chocolate kayo sa akin, pero hindi nyo matatandaan yan. Git branch will create a virtual pointer to that current commit. Kunyari, nandun ako sa E9, yun, hash. Pag nag branch, dash M main ako, gagawa ako ng branch from that um, commit, and I'm calling it main. Yun lang yun, that's it. So, if you git check out main, you're actually checking out this E9B1779C. 
I will explain later bakit natin kailangan mag-branch. Actually, go back lang ako ah. This one, this is a branch. Tapin nyo ba? Ito, branch to. Ito, branch to. Pwede natin pangalanan ng branch yan later. Kasi para siyang tree. May root, may tree. Okay. Ganun kasi mga tech people eh. Please, ang gumamit ng real word, words. Okay. Okay. So, sa git, you can actually update your config file. This is this config file is actually just a plain file. It's a key value file. You can actually edit it in your Notepad, in your Notepad++. Plus plus. Right-click it, open it, and then hanapin nyo lang user that name value, palitan nyo ng value. However, si git, um, you can actually do that in the command line. And the command is git config yung key na gusto mong palitan and then yung value na gusto mong ilagay. That's it. So instead of you going to the .git folder, yung sinabi natin kanina, and actually issue this command and si git na magpapalit ng configuration mo for you. Okay? Very simple. Git remote. Okay. Um, as you can see, Git is actually working on your local repository. But it's more fun if you can actually share your Git repository to others kasi wala nang nakaka-access ng Git repository mo eh. So, one way to do this is to find a Git repository hosting website like GitHub. And yun nga, sinabi ko earlier, kinakalaban sila ng GitLab right now. And then, you can actually set this to your remote repository where you can push your changes. Okay? The first command for that is git remote. Okay, yun yung keyword. Yun lang. Remote. Anong gusto mong gawin sa remote? Ay, napaka-sequential yan. Okay. Git. Um, gusto kong mag-add ng remote. Pangalanan mo siyang origin. Ito yung value. Clear? Git, remote, add, kung gusto mong pangalan, the URL. And then, notice this, guys. Notice this. Yung dulo ng remote git repository, always yan, dot git. Pansin niyo. Just like your local workspace. Yun lang yun. You're just pushing your own folder to a Git repository hosting website, which is GitHub. Or gusto mo, gitlab.com. That's it. Git, remote, add. Gusto mo lagay dito, origin 1, origin 2, bahala ka na, na malaki ka na. Then the URL. That's it. Okay. So, that's what I did on this one. Again, wag yung mabibigla pag may ganito. To put your local Git repository to a Git repository somewhere, you do a Git push. Okay? So, kanina, nag, naglagay ng Git remote add. Now, gagamitin na natin siya. We will push everything to the origin. Again, anong value ni origin? Ito. So, git push dash u origin. At ano yung push ko? Anong branch? Earlier, ganun, di ba? Gumawa tayo ng main branch. So, ipush mo, pakipush nga yung main branch sa remote. So, that's it. Git push. I forgot the dash u. I think this is update. Uh, basta, yung mga dash u na yan, kinoconfigure din yan eh. I forgot lang. Okay. Git push origin main. This is just a simple if telling git, ipush mo nga sa origin yung main branch ko. So, binigyan ka ng status ni git. Ah, okay. Meron kong five files dito. Ah, okay. Five files nga. Okay, kinompress niya. Kinompress niya. Nirite niya. Okay, mer meron siyang one delta na nakita. Again, this is one changes. Wala ko na reuse. Siguro yung ibang files. Bago talaga. Okay, then na. Uh, okay. Ayun na. So, finally, lahat ng changes ko nasa GitHub na. Git, demos dash git. Tapos, eto, bakit siya naka-asterisk? Kasi, Ibig sabihin, dito sa repository na to, wala pang main branch. So, nung pinush ko yung repository ko, gumawa siya ng main branch sa GitHub. And then, finally, sinabi ni Git, yung main mo is now tracking the main branch from origin. 
So any changes that you did to your main branch, it will track any changes from the main branch in Git. What does that mean? If may magbago ng something sa main branch, and you issue a git pull later, baku comment changes na yun. Okay? I hope that's clear. So, git remote add. Pinush mo yung buong repository mo. Okay, I'm gonna explain it later. So, ito na siya. Um, so, this is my git demo. Wala pa siyang laman nakita yung git code. Ito na yung code tab. This is GitHub, by the way. Maraming tabs yan. If you click the codes, wala pa siyang laman, no? Wala pang laman. So, after I do a git push, ayun na. Nagkalaman na siya. My first file delete, my first commit. So, ngayon, yung GitHub repository ko at yung folder ko sa laptop ko, magka-sync na siya. Okay? Dahil pinush ko yung repository ko sa GitHub. Clear? Clear? Too fast? Yes. Okay. Sige. Now, ngayon, si, si, si Carl, si Kai, gusto niyang ma-clone yung repository na, uy, parang gusto kong workan yung repository na yan, or kailangan kong, ang, um, kailangan kong kunin sa workspace kaya. Ngayon, mag install lang ako ng git ngayon. Gawa ako ng panibagong folder. Kunyari, folder ni Kai to. Issue ko lang itong commands na to. Git, clone. Ano yung i-clone ko? Itong repository na to. So, gagawa siya ng folder, git demo. Uy, may five objects. Uy, kinompress. Uy, 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 uy. Yun na yun. Kung yun napansin niya, pag may error dyan, mag-google kayo. Okay, so, pang ilang command na ba to? So, git clone. Yun lang, it's just cloning the whole repository to your workspace. That's it. So, kung tatanungin niyo ako, Gab, nasa ba yung, ano, yung source code natin doon sa mobile app natin, si Pisara? Ah, ito yung GitHub link. So, bibigay ko lang sa inyo to. The first, the first command that you will do is issue a git clone. Then this, makukuha niyo na lahat ng source code. That's it. Okay. Ayun, sa so, sinabi ko kanina, if... May changes. Balik lang ako ah. Dito sa main branch. Kasi di ba, nag-push ka ng changes. So, meron kang file ABC. Pinush mo sa main. Si GitHub, merong file ABC. Ngayon, nag-clone si Kai dito. Nagdagdag siya ng file D. Okay? So, ngayon, paano ko siya makukuha sa workspace ko? You will just do a git pull. So, dahil nga, nasa main branch ka sa local laptop mo, Pag inusyo mo tong command na to, i-update niya yung laptop mo from the remote. Ay, nagbago na yung remote. Sabi ni Git, kunin ko nga yung isang file na yon. So, kinuha niya. Okay? Is that clear? So, that's the Git pull. It's just like saving everything in the remote repository and getting all those changes on your local. Clear? Tapos so, napansin nyo, this is the hash commit. Locally, you have this hash commit. Ngayon, na, nabago na siya kasi nga hindi na siya version 3. Yung nasa file mo locally, ito ng version BF08, blah, 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 blah. Fast forward meaning na merge siya sa local mo. Walang kailangan gawin. Kaya siya fast forward. Google nyo na lang. Ano yung sabi niyan? Okay, so that's the 10 git commands. Um, I think this is the last part, the git branching. Everyone's, everyone else okay so far? Yes, all good. Okay, ito na. Um, dapat mag-water break ako. Pero... Okay. I'm just gonna give you a quick background of SVN and git. So, as I mentioned earlier, so, C0 is the parent of C1, the parent of C2, and we created this master branch from here. So, it just means, na kapag chinecout mo si master, you're actually looking at C2. Correct? So, this is the master branch. So, we want to branch off from C2. 
para dito na tayo mag-work kay Master Branch. Clear pa yung concept niya? Pointer lang to, pointer. We're just pointing master to commit to. Clear pa? Medyo nakakalito na to moving forward. Pointer lang to. We're just, kung baga mayroon kang document, so mayroon kang C0 document, C1 document. First changes, second changes. Ah, okay. Ito second change na to, from now on, declare kita as the master change. Okay? So you are the master change. From there, from that point on, you can actually tell your whole team na, oy, sa master kayo maglagay ng changes sa wag sa C1. Bakit kaya? Why, why is it so? Bakit kaya? But why is it important for everyone to check out master branch instead of commit one? Why is it? Anyone? For C2. Yes. Bakit kailangan kay, kay master branch tayo mag-work? Hindi kay C1. Hello? Why is it important? Okay, see it. Because again, if someone did a check out of this commit, paano la yung changes kay commit 2? Diba? Hindi nila makukuha. What if yung color ng header dito is green? Color ng header dito is blue. Kung dito sila nagwo-work, dineploy nila to sa Yes, para maka error over changes. Di-deploy nila to sa, sa test server. Wala na. Ang mga deploy sa test server, color green yung background. However, if nakinig talaga tong person na to, sabi na natin si ano to, si Jambay, nakinig talaga siya, ang chinek out niya si master, and dito siya nag-work, di-deploy niya codes niya sa test, tama na yung color ng header sa website. It's actually blue. O teka lang, Bakit na green to? Eh kasi nag-work ka sa commit 1 eh. Hindi naman dapat yun yung file na change mo. Ang dapat na pinapalitan mong file is the master branch which is pointing to commit 2. Okay? In subversion, branches are physical, sometimes they are physical copies of the whole folder. Meaning, kung may folder 1 ako, may folder 1 ako, imagine niyo na lang, folder 1, laman niya file ABC, Ang gagawin ni subversion, I'm not sure if they're still doing this, ikakapi niya buong folder na yon, to, papangalan niyang C2, tapos, yung C2 na yon, lalagay niya doon si file A, B, C, D. So, meron ka na ngayon dalawang folder, C1, C2, file A, B, C, file A, B, C, D, E. Nagigit siya yung concept ni, yung branching ni SVN. Each commit is a folder. Tapos nilalagay niya kung anong changes doon. Nagigets ba? Gets? Yes. To the internal words, yung kanina, yung sinabi nung, yung WordPress, ano natin. So instead of instead of us making changes to the file kasi hindi nga siya revision control, ang ginagawa, nat, ang ginagawa ni SVN, dinuduplicate niya yung folder. To duplicate niya yung folder, C1, then gagawin niya yung changes doon. Okay, tapos ka na dito. To duplicate na naman niya itong folder, gagawin niya yung changes doon. Para, ay, mali pala, recover ako. Ay, ayaw pala nila, okay, recover ako. Meron kang copies no snapshot in point in time. However, that is very expensive. Okay? Bakit siya expensive kaya? Bakit siya resource expensive? Why do you think so? Bakit hindi maganda yung ganung approach? <clears throat> yung ginawang approach yung SVN, bawat isang commit meron siyang isang folder. Why? Hello? <clears throat> and 
ideas? Yes. <clears throat> Aira, thank you. <clears throat> In C0, if meron ang tatlong files dito, kinapi mo dito, meron ang dalawang copy ng file. Eh, paano kung take to 2 gig yung file na yun? So, 2 gig, 2 gig. Actually, um, we're painting SBN in bad light. Pero kunwari lang ganun ginagawa nila. Pero actually, hindi ganun ginagawa nila. Okay. Uh, so, kung meron 2 gig file dito, kinapin niya 2 gig file dito, kinapin niya naman yung 2 gig file dito, all in all, meron kang 6 gig of file. So, that's very resource expensive. Si Git, what does Git do? Kapag nag-branch ka, hindi siya magka-copy. Maglalagay lang siya ng pointer. Okay? This is just a pointer. This is me saying master branch is pointing to C2. I hope that's clear. Okay. <clears throat> so, let's just say we have a repository with git3 commits. So, this commit 2, ang SHA-1 hash niya is ISS53. And then, we name this SHA-1 hash as the master. That's it. Yun lang ginawa natin. Yung command kanina, git branch dash m master. Okay. So, kapag nag-commit ka dun sa current commit mo, bakit kaya biglang na ganito? Bakit yung commit tree na iwan si master? Why? Hello? But can I iwan si master? Again, master is just a pointer. Gumawa ka ng changes kay ISS53. Bakit naging ganito? Bakit biglang naging ganito yung graph? Anyone? Okay, sirit na. Wala na gawala. Time of branching. Yes, the time of the... Yes, actually, technically, kasi nag-branch ka dito. So, sinasabi mo, master, tumuro ka lang yung C2. Okay, sige. So, whatever changes that I did with ISS 53, Hindi naman kasama si master. Master is still pointing to C2. Okay? So, kung nag-commit ka dito, dito lang yan. Dito lang yung present kay ISS 53. This commit. Or kung nag-branch out ka pa ng iba dito, dun ka nagbago ng changes, hindi magbabago si master. Nandyan lang yan forever. Nakaturo lang siya kay C2. Bakit? What's the use of this? Usually, Kunyari itong commit to na to, nandiyan si file, A, B, C, D, ipapa-certify nyo sa QA yan. Okay, pakicertify nga itong QA na to, deploy na namin itong codes na to sa production. Okay, sige. Ngayon sa production, ang gagawin nyo, i-check out nyo lang yung master, yun ang i-deploy nyo. No one should be able to change something in the master branch. Usually, yan yung ano, pinoprotecta nila for any changes. Okay, so walang mga pagpabago dyan. So, at any particular point in time, kahit ano pang gawin nyo, baboyin nyo yung repository na yan, sirain nyo, moving forward. Pero, pag gusto natin i-deploy yung master branch, oops, deploy natin sa master branch, titignan ko lang tong file na to, si C2. File A, B, C, D, deploy ko sa test branch, ay sa test application, production application, dev application, kasi safe na tayo. We certified that these codes the picture in this particular point in time is already certified. Ayun siya. Okay? I hope that's clear. Move on ako. Okay. So, paano yan? Um, Nagko-code ako dito. Tapos, bigla nagkaroon ng production, ng production issue. Ngayon, gagawa ko ng bagong branch. Papakalala ko siyang hotfix branch. Kanino siya nang galing? Kay C2. Ah, si C2 pala si master branch. So ngayon, nakita nyo, may isang parent lang isang commit. Si C2 parent si C1, C1 parent si C0, C3 parent si C2, C4 parent si C2. Okay? So ngayon, from the master branch, 
gumawa ako ng branch, isa pang branch called hotfix. Meaning, ang laman ni C2, file A, B, C, D. Ang laman nito, file A, B, C, D. Pero, hotfix nga siya eh. Malay mo dito, meron silang dinadagdag na tatlong features. Nagdadagdag sila ng bagong feature ng security, ng registration, ng newsletter. However, ito, ang gusto mo lang bagawin dito, gusto mo lang i-fix something yung bag sa registration page. Hindi, ito yung, hindi ka dito magbabranch kasi magulo na yung codes dito. Unstable na yan. Ang dami na nangyayari dito sa branch na to. Dito na nagko-code yung the first order branch. So ngayon, magbabranch off ka kay master. So, may bago akong COVID-19. Ito yung dito ko magbabago. Kasi you are guaranteed that the files here are already working kasi nasa production nga to. Assuming na ito yung ginamit sa production. Ngayon, binago mo na yun. Okay. That's good. So, ito yung mas malaking picture niya. So, master branch. Nag-branch off ako from the master branch. Nagkaroon akong bagong copy. Okay. Ngayon, so meron ng dalawang branch na, na active. Ginagawa nung the first order branch, ginagawa nung octopus branch. Ay, octopus team. Ito, mas stable kasi galing siya master. Ito, mas unstable kasi ang daming features sa bago dito. Eventually, kailangan mag-merge na yon Kasi, na-certify na natin na okay na siya, i-merge natin yung hotfix branch to master branch. So, ngayon, tatawagin na natin siyang commit for. Pero, check nyo. Si ISS53, nakaturo pa rin siya kay C2. Bakit kaya? Why? At anong implications niyan? Can somebody tell me? Kumuha tayo ng hotfix branch. Ibig sabihin, may bug daw sa production. Ngayon, si master branch at si hotfix branch, they are pointing to one commit, C4. Commit 4. So, anong problema kay C3? May malaking problema si C3 right now, si commit 3. Kung saan nag-work in development team? Ano yung problema nila? This is common. Kahit sa mga development team until now, um, years na sila gumagamit ng git, nagiging common problem to. What is the problem of the commit 3 branch? Uh, I mean, the commit 3. ISS 53 branch. Anong problem? Nito. Si commit 3, which is pointing to C2. Anyone guesses? Come on, guys. We have 20 minutes left. Exactly. Wala siyang idea kay Hotfix. Yung Phoenix na bug dito, makikita lang siya kay Commit 4. Okay? Thanks, Queen. Na kay Commit 4 siya. Si Commit 3, nag-branch off siya kay C2, wherein itong C2 na to nandito yung bug. At na-fix yung bug na yun kay Commit 4. Ngayon, ibig sabihin, this team is working on a file on a, on a file na merong bug. What's the best solution for this? Hmm. Yes. I-merge mo si C4 to C3 para all of them will be work all of them will be aligned. Master, Hotfix and Development branch, whichever codes na meron kayo dito, i-merge nila kay C4. Ito yung bigger picture. Ngayon, ah, ito pala. Sorry. Okay. So ngayon, yung Q3, gumawa ka na naman ng bagong commit, si commit 5. So alam na natin si master nandito. So again, as we mentioned, si commit 5, nandito pa yung bug. <laughs> Na-fix na siya kay C4, pero nandito pa yung bug. Na kay C5 pa siya. So wala ka naman alam eh. Then commit ka pa. Ano naman? Wala natin magagawa. Hindi natin alam na may sad past siya. Anyway, so, ang, uh, good way to visualize this is 
So, yung C4 mo is the master branch. C5 mo is branch. Ang common ancestor nila, pareha silang nanggaling kay C2. Okay? This is very clear. Si C4, nangyari lang to kasi nga may hotfix. Ngayon, si C3, C5, kasi nga nag-branch off tayo sa kanya, gumagawa tayong development. Hindi naman pwede matigil ang development dahil lang may bug sa production. Eh, kailangan yan eh. So, ang gagawin natin, kailangan natin gumawa ng merge commits as uh, June mentioned. We need the snapshot to merge into. So, merge natin dito. Yun nandito natin. Pero baliktad yun ha. So, assuming lang natapos na sila. Okay. So, ito yun. So, basically, when you're done with that, minerge natin yung si C6 to si C6 is a merge of C4 and C5. So, ito na yung graph na nakikita natin. So, at any point in time, pwede natin makita kung ano ginawa development dito. Check out natin si C5. That's okay. Check out natin si C3. That's okay. C4. That's okay. Pero eventually, the latest and greatest codes is na kay C6. So, minerge natin yung codes na to back to master. So, ngayon, si, ba si master, nandiyan yung latest and greatest codes. Is this clear? Clear naman? Kung bakit nagkaganyan yung graph? Yes. Thank you. Okay, this is a bigger picture. If gusto nyo makita. Joke lang na last stat topic na siya at talagang last topic. Okay. There are different SM strategies. Um, this is one of our uh, one of the most talked about seminars I am doing back in AT&T. Um, about SAM strategy because lots of them are not using the proper SAM strategy. Okay. According to Google, okay, bago yung Google, ano yung sabi ng workflow? English word. You will hear this a lot in a business. What's your business workflow? What's your development workflow? Ano yung creative, uh, ano yung creative design workflow nyo? Something like that. What do you mean by workflow at first? Sequence of task, yeah, it's correct. So it's a sequence of task with a strict process. Yes, Jamie, um, define processes in order. Yeah, that's correct. You have this strict discipline na gagawin mo. You have your strict workflow na gagamitin. And you all agreed upon. So that's the flow of your work. Diba? English language. Thank you, everyone. So sequence of processes from start to finish. In Git. Ah, uh, workflow daw. It's a fancy way of saying na ito yung step by step by step process na gagamitin natin si Git. So, walang alam ko merong plugin called Git Flow Workflow. But walang walang command na Git Flow. <laughs> walang ganyan. So, it's just a process that you will deal uh, with your team. Okay? One of the most popular Git workflow is actually Git Flow. And there's a very good illustration about it sa Atlassian website. Okay. So, ito yon. So, meron kang main branch. Di ba? Alam na natin paano basahin to. Ngayon, gagawa ka ng development branch. Why? Because ayaw nga natin baguhin ang baguhin with si main branch. Dapat stable lang yan. It's a strategy, ha? Ah. Yung iba, meron tinatago ang stable main strategy. Lahat naman na ng development na kay main. Uh, Git flow, ang concept niya, si main, hindi masyado nagagalaw. So, the main branch is magagalaw lang yung pag nag-merge. Okay? So, when you're here, gagawa ka ng branch. We know how to create a branch. We name it develop. Ah, okay. May change. Ah, okay, may change. Ah, okay, may change. Ah, okay na to. Version 2 na to. So, you merge back. So, ngayon, si main v0.2, stable na siya. Siya na to. Ah, okay, may change. Somewhere here, meron na naman siyang ginawang V1.0. Tapos dito, may changes pa rin sa development branch. So, the main concept of Git flow is you should not be doing any code changes sa main branch. Lahat yan laging merge. Gawa ka ng develop branch or development branch as they call it. Doon yung gawin ng mga changes nyo. So, here's the bigger picture. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. 
Uh, we use the main branch to point to a stable commit. We use the develop branch to point to commit where the active development is happening. And once we're ready, we will merge back to the main branch. So how can we prove that the develop, develop branch is stable if na QA na natin na maayos yan? That's it. So, um, bakit, ba't pa tayo ganun kung may development branch naman na? Say, what if marami tayong developers, mga sampu tayo? So, halos every day nagbabago yung development branch. So, gawa tayo ng mga feature branches. So, ito yung magandang practice dyan. Um, at least one feature lang per branch. So, from there, so as you can see, from the main, gumawa tayo ng development branch. From the development branch, gumawa pa ako ng feature. Anong feature to? Registration feature. So, sabihin na natin, itong line na to, it deals with the registration feature. Okay, initial file, change ko yung color, change ko yung laging mechanism, change ko yung whatever. So, this branch is called the registration feature branch. Kasi itong second line na to, deals with login feature branch. So, from here, I can work independently. Wala akong matatamaan. I don't care kung ano ginagawa ni registration. Basta ako, ang ginagawa ko lang feature for login. At nag-branch off ako from the development branch. And then eventually, nakita nyo, nagpantay-pantay na siya dito. May binago na naman. Minerge up na naman. Minerge up, tapos minerge down. Okay? Clear naman so far? So, this feature, ito yung pinakamaganda niya eh, Kasi, you can focus on one feature at a time. Pwede mo gawin login registration, login feature branch, registration feature branch, homepage feature branch. So, tiki-tiki isang branch yan. Hindi nyo maapektuhan yung code ng isa't isa kasi isa-isa namang i-merge back sa develop yan. Okay? Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Okay, ito pa. So, bakit? Ayun pa. So, di gawa pa tayong branch. Dali lang pala mag-branch sa ano eh. Sa, <laughs> sa git eh. So, right here, meron naman tinatawag na release branches. Actually, meron pang tags eh. Um, actually, as I mentioned before, branches are just pointers. You're pointing to a particular commit. Okay? So, in here, kapag nalaman na natin stable na tong development branch na to, si 1, 2, 3, 4, which contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 commits, pwede natin itong mag-branch off dito sa development na to. Mag-branch off tayo. Itong line na to, this is the release branch. Para gumawa ng release branch code, release 1. Eh, maalay mo, meron tayong ginawang changes. So, ito, si release 2. Si release 2, minerge back natin sa kay main. Ngayon, kapag gagawa tayo ng application, kunyari, meron tayong Jenkins or sa cloud, iti-check out, alam niyo na yung term na check out ha, nung tool, the cloud tool, etong release branch na to. Kasi we deemed it, we declared it, that this release branch, etong line na to, lahat lang na mapupunta sa branch na to, is tested and proven to be okay. Kaya na nga siya tinagod na release branch. Ngayon, yung mga cloud tools nyo, mga build tools nyo, de-declare nyo, okay, get nyo si release underscore 2 branch kasi yan yung latest and greatest file. Again, this is the feature branches and development branch. Ito si release branch. Si main, pang keep lang siya. O gab, ano naman difference si main? So this one, anong difference? Well, si main, at least nandiyan yung pinaka-stable mong code. This is stable, this is stable. Ayan, ayan siya. Itatag mo siya para magkaroon ka lang ng naming convention. Kasi ito, lagi lang ang pangalan lang niya, lagi main. Yan lang, main branch lang yan. Dito, nagbabago yan. Itong pangalan ni main, di yan nagbabago. Main 1, main 2, main 3. No, it's just one main. Si release branch, release 1, release 2, R3, R4, ikaw na bahala. Okay? Si hotfix branch, ito naman, dineclare ko kanina, ay, diniscuss ko. Um, what if, sa kalagitan na development, okay, may main branch ka. Eh, sa kalagitan na development, nagkaroon ng bug. Ibig sabihin ba, titigil na buong team? No. I-fix mo yon. Fix mo kagad, tas i-merge back mo kagad sa main. Tapos sila, tas yung hotfix code na yon, i-merge down mo dito sa develop, which is masasama siya sa mga features na ginawa for that particular release dito. Tinag ko siya as release 1, release 1. 
Tapos, pantay-pantay na sila dito. Again, we're dealing with files that being changed concurrently at the same time. That's why we have this kind of process. Kapag nagkaroon ng bug sa production, gagawin ba siya sa kay registration feature branch? Yes or no? Kung sino man naka-assign kay registration feature, nagkaroon ng bug sa production, ifi-fix ba siya dito? Yes or no, guys? Hello? Nagkaroon ng bug sa production. If you fix, eh, meron ka ng codes dito na may apat ng commits. If you fix ba dito kay registration feature branch? Dito. If you fix ba siya here? No. Kasi iba na yung codes na itsura dito eh. Tsaka kailangan i-deploy ka agad to. Production yan eh. Kay login feature branch, siya ba gagawa nito? Sa codes ba? Dito ba ilalagay sa codes na to? The same thing. No. Again, gagawa ka ng sarili mong hotfix branch kasi kailangan na kagad ma-fix to sa production. So, dapat mag-branch off ka from the latest and greatest codes. This is not the latest and greatest code. This is not the latest code. This is not the latest code. Ang latest code, as we mentioned, is the main branch. Branch off ka sa latest code na gumagana. Do your changes. Ayusin mo yung bug. Merge back mo kagad. Then, merge down mo sa develop para eventually, masama siya sa mga features na ginagawa ng development team. Okay? So, clear naman si hotfix branch? Okay. Sige. And I think that's it. That's the end of the presentation. So, I hope you guys learned something about the presentation itself. And, um, yeah, it's time for Q&A for any questions that you have. Uh, magbabasa lang ako ng messages nyo here. Okay. Um, Queen, why git is important? So, do you know na why git is important right now? Yes, of course, okay. for deployment. <laughs> Okay, tsaka yun nga, di ba, yung git flow workflow, marami. If sobrang active ng development team nyo, kung meron nag-incharge sa hotfix, may incharge sa deployment, yeah, git is very important. Content creator with lots of IoT skills, yan, marami tayong IoT projects, can be git applied outside. Okay, so the git concept, actually, uh, merong tinatang ni git LFS. Git is very good at storing and doing version control for source code. Pero it's not intended for artifacts like images. Sounds actually, yes. Um, merong mga version control system for mga sound files. Kasi dun siya mas focus. Pero Git is focus on source code. Pwede ba mag-save ng images sa Git? Definitely. Kapag ba nagbago yung images sa Git, madetetect pa ni Git? Yes. Pero it's not optimized for that. What is SVN? Okay. And why is SVN better than Git? So, sa version, siya yung previous ano ni SVN, ni Git. The main difference here is that sa version, meron siyang central repository. You cannot actually work on your local. Okay? You make changes to your local, walang makakita yung gagatin mo sinesave sa Git. Eh, sa, sa remote SVN repository. So, kung napapansin nyo, walang SVN clone na command. Siyempre, hindi nyo, nyo naman mapapansin, hindi nyo alam SVN eh. Pero merong git clone. Why? Kasi si git, you're actually getting the whole repository. Si SVN, you're getting a snapshot. Ang sinicheck out nyo sa SVN, yung C1, C2, C3 yun. SVN, check out C1. SVN, check out C2, C3. Sa git, no. You're actually getting the whole repository. And why, why is it important? Kasi nga, sinabi ko na anong kina um, similarities ni Git is a distributed version control system. It's a DVCS. And blockchain 
Rizky Squad. Anyone read blockchain? Blockchain is a distributed ledger. So sa Git, kapag merong copy yan sa GitHub, may copy ako. May copy si JM, may copy si Quinn, may copy si Mon. The whole repository, meron ko yung copy. At ang ginagawa lang natin, pinagkukumbine natin yung copies ng repository natin. Ah, sa repository ko, ang changes ko, file ABC. Sa repository ni Quinn, ang changes, file CDE. Sa repository ni JM, file ito. Si Niris, ito. Kay Jamie, ito. Okay? Kay Mon, ito. Yun yun. So, lahat tayo may copy ng repository. So, mas okay siya. So, ba, ano advantage niya? Well, number one, kung lahat tayo may clone ng repository, may backup tayo ng repository. Kahit mag-down yung GitHub right now, may copy tayo lahat ng repository. No problem. Si Subversion, uh, meron ka lang copy yung snapshot. SVN snapshot 42. Pero yung whole history, nung five years ng history ng development ng company nyo, mawawala pag nawala yung Central SVN server nyo. That's it. Say goodbye. Number one, advantage. Pangalawa, so git inexpensive. Nakita nyo naman, kanya-kanya tayong copy ng repository. Kahit na nasa local lang ako, gusto kong isave yung mga changes ko. Okay. Git commit lang ako git commit. That's it. Nasa save yung changes mo. Save, save, save. Pero eventually, gusto mo siyang masave somewhere, i-push mo sa repository sa GitHub. Ito pa, isang possible. Pwede mo i-push yung repository mo sa laptop ng someone else kasi it's the same. Push mo siya sa repository ni Miguel. Diba ni Nicole? That's it. You're actually pushing yung copy ng Git repository mo sa laptop niya. How does blockchain work? Can anyone tell me? Okay, may free lessons din sila ng blockchain. So, sa blockchain, ganun din daw. Instead of someone, si SVN, di ba, nakasave yung SVN on a central server. So, the concept of blockchain is the same. Instead of someone holding the money for us, there's a central bank. Uh, may tig-100 pesos. Paano kung malalaman na may 100 pesos si Nicole? Or ako? Kailangan natin na ledger, di ba? Tapos, we will need someone to trust with that ledger. Sino yon? Si bank yon. Ngayon, si blockchain, dinecentralize niya yon. Okay? So, ayon niya, niya decentralize. So, it's, so, gumawa siya ng decentralized system para daw magkaroon ng distributed ledger. So, lahat tayo, lahat tayong 19 na tao dito, meron tayong copy ng ledger na yon. Lahat na nakasulat doon, Gab 100, Harold 100, okay, Aira 100. Ngayon, paano kung binigyan ko ng 50 pesos si Mon? Sa Central Bank, kukunin ni bank yung 50 pesos sa akin, tapos ilalagay sa account ni Mon. Diba? Ngayon, i-update ko yung ledger ko na si Gab, merong na lang 50 pesos, si Mon meron lang 150 pesos. That's how bank works. Sa blockchain daw, wala ng central bank. Lahat tayo sharing the same ledger. Kapag nagbayad ako ng 50 pesos kay Mon, i-validate ko yung transaction na yun, at pag na-validate yung transaction na i-update ko lahat ng ledger nyo lahat. Kaya sobrang hirap niyang madaya. That's why uh, block, the blockchain technology is used commonly sa financial, sa fintech. So blockchain is not limited to fintech. Kaya siya Sikat sa fintech kasi nga yun nga eh. Pwede mo gamitin yung concept na yun so that kaya natin protektahan yung pera without trusting a third party. Okay? Meron tayong distributed ledger. Lahat ng transaction na yun. Ah, okay. Nagbayad pala si... Bakit 150 na kaya tong ano? Bakit 150 na kaya tong pera ni ano? Ni Gab? So, check natin ledger natin. Lahat tayo may ledger. Don't worry. Ah, okay. Ay, sorry, 150 na mon. Nagbayad si, ano, si Gab ng 50 pesos kay Mon. 
Okay? Tapos i-update ko yung ledger nyo lahat. Just imagine, if you have a million ledgers around the world, paano mo ako nanakawan? E bawat transaction na meron ako, nakarecord sa lahat ng ledgers nyo. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan mo rin nakawan, kailangan mo rin update yung ledger nung lahat ng 1 million ledgers na yon para lang maging valid yung transaction mo. Okay? Nakits yung concept ng blockchain? <laughs> That's why it's a block. There's a block and you're chaining it to a transaction. Medyo deep na yon, Pero, yeah, yun yung concept nun. Uh, to create a prominent app, similar to Jarvis, why is it considered easy to work in Git? Nicole, I think, na-answer ko na to. Easy naman yung commands niya, di ba? Uh, Neris, yes, advantages, I think nakuha ko na rin. Building an app. Era, is learning Git complicated? Ano sa tingin mo? Complicated ba siya? Ano na explain na? Deep na po. Okay. And I think that's it. Uh, thank you guys for attending yung Git Essentials natin. And I hope I answered everyone's question and everything. And that's it. See you sa next learning session natin. I think I will have cloud sa next session ko. And I hope to see you guys there. Thank you. Bye-bye.